Hallelujah. We are so overjoyed to come your way once again. I am so excited today. Um, we're coming to you live here and, and, and I trust God that it's going to be such a great blessing and it's going to be such an impactful moment. It's going to be such an insightful moment. We're going to receive the word of God that is able to change our lives and transform our lives. And last week we started with the, the whole idea of having corporate worship as our family meeting with God. And today we want to look at the second part of this where we see the main focus of our family meeting with God. And so I want us to share a word of prayer before we go into the word. And so, Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for your word. We pray that you will speak to our hearts. Let the entrance of your words bring light and understanding unto us. Let our lives never be the same again. In Jesus' name, amen. And so we are looking at God's presence as the focus of our corporate worship. When we talk about the fact that we meet together on, on Sundays or whatever day during the, the midweek, what happens is that quite a number of people come, but they have different points of focus, different reasons, different, I mean, I, I mean reasons why they came into church. But the point is that we've got to understand that there's an established principle in Scripture about the main reason why we gather together. There's actually one focus, one point of focus. And so we want to turn our Bibles back to our foundational scripture in Genesis chapter 3 verse 8, where we looked at last week and we saw the establishment of corporate worship. And so Genesis chapter 3 verse 8 says, And they heard the sound of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day, and Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God among the trees of the garden. And so we, we pay a particular attention to the last line of that particular statement, which says, And Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God Almighty. This statement actually gives us the idea and the understanding that the main reason why Adam and Eve met was because of the presence of God. But at this point in time, they had dishonored God, they had sinned against God, they had displeased God, and so they were hiding from the focus of the meeting. They were hiding from the presence of God. And so as we established last week, that when God instituted this form of worship, corporate worship, where two or more come together, the, the concept was that they come together and the, the reason or the object of coming together is God himself. And so we established the principle that the audience of our corporate worship is one, and that is God. We must never lose sight of this important focus of our corporate worship. Yes, when we come together, we have other people coming together, but it's not another social gathering. It's actually because of God that we have come together. When we come together, we might have other auxiliary activities, but we must never lose sight of the fact that the presence of God is key and central to our meetings when we come together. And so what is the presence of God? The presence of God, as the word, the Hebrew word as used in this passage, is actually the word that is translated presence, but in the Hebrew it actually means face. So when we say the presence of God, we're actually talking about the face of God. In, in other words, when the Hebrew writer is actually talking about the presence of God and using this word, he's saying that it is the place where God shows his face. And you know that when I show my face in a place, it means that my entire being is there. The entirety of who I am is there. And so the presence of God is actually God being in a particular place. And so sometimes when we use the word presence of God, it, it might look something, something different from God. But it's actually God being in a place. And when you look through scripture, you see three kinds of the presence of God that is actually described. And shortly, I want us to look at it. The first one is the only presence of God. What we talk about God being everywhere at the same time. And that, that is found, one particular scripture that speaks to this truth is Psalm 139 verse 8. It says, if I ascend into heaven, you are there. If I make my bed in hell, behold, you are there. And so that is the only presence of God. Wherever I go, God is there and he's there at the same time. But there's also the second type of presence of God that is actually, I mean, established in scripture. And that is what we call the covenant presence of God. 
When we talk about the covenant presence of God, we are talking about the fact that by virtue of two or more people coming together and gathering together in the name of God, or in the name of Jesus, he actually comes into their mess. He is mandated to come into their mess because they are meeting for the purpose of him. And that is what we see in this particular passage in Genesis chapter 3 verse 8. But it's re-echoed in Matthew chapter 18 verse 20. It says that for where two or three are gathered together in my name, I am there in the midst of them. So as long as two or three or more people gather together in the name of Jesus, gather because of him, he comes into the midst of them. But there's a third type that is actually described in the scriptures, and that is the manifest presence of God. We won't talk about the manifest presence of God. We are actually looking at the fact that God has not just come into our midst, but God manifests His power. God actually shows up greatly. God shows up mightily. God shows up, I mean, in an awesome way. And so that is what is called the manifest presence of God. And so in this particular passage, we are actually seeing the covenant presence of God. Where by virtue of the fact that two or three or more people are gathered together, God comes into our midst. And so whenever we gather together, we experience what we call the covenant presence of God. His only presence is everywhere at the same time. God sees everything at the same time. But God specially comes into our midst as the reason or the object of our worship when we come together. But guess what? When we honor the covenant presence of God, we see the manifest presence of God. And so a scripture that speaks to the manifest presence of God is John chapter 2 verse 11. The Bible says, This beginning of signs Jesus did in Cana of Galilee and manifested his glory and his disciples believed in him. In this particular instance, what happened was that there was this wedding feast, which is a popular passage that we all, I mean, most people know. And in this particular feast, Jesus was there and there was a shortage of, of the wine. But look at what the mother said. The mother actually came to Jesus and said that the, 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 there's a shortage. I mean, and, 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 uh, and Jesus said, it is not his time yet. But look at what the mother does. He, she turns to the servants and tells them that whatever he tells you to do, do it. And as he began, and the people did what Jesus told them to do. That is to fetch water into those jars. The water turned into wine. And so we get understanding that when we honor God, when we honor his covenant presence, when we honor the fact that he is in our midst, and we do what he says we should do, what happens is that he manifests himself. And we begin to see his mighty power, and we begin to see the tangibleness of his presence, and we begin to see his glory manifested, and we see all forms of miracles and healings and amazing things happen. And I'm believing God and trusting God that the church is coming to that place again where we honor God's covenant presence, and as we we honor his covenant presence we'll see him manifest himself greatly in our midst we'll see amazing things happen we'll see great testimonies happen we'll see great miracles happen we want to see it once again but we can only see it when we honor his covenant presence so i told the church on sunday that I am trusting that as a pastor, I will honor the presence of God. That as the congregation members, they will honor the presence of God. And together we can see God show up so mightily in our midst and do great and mighty things that our minds cannot fathom. And so when we honor God's covenant presence, we will see his manifest presence. Now, how do we keep the presence of God as the focus of our corporate worship? How do we? constantly engage this presence and keep it as the focus of our corporate worship the first thing is desire there must be a desire i want to talk about desire we are actually talking about the feeling that accompanies an unsatisfied state it, it actually refers to a hunger an inclination to want something so uh, corporately if we want to see the presence of god and want to focus keep our focus on this covenant presence of god we must all have a desire for god's presence there must be a hunger in our hearts 
a, 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 a strong passion, a strong longing and wanting for God. And in every single one of us, when we are coming to church, we actually have that desire to see God in our midst. We actually have that longing and that passion that, that for this service, it is because of God. And until we see God, we are not living. I can tell you that we will definitely see God. We will definitely see the manifestation of His presence. The second important thing to do to see, I mean, to keep our focus on the presence of God corporately is what I call decision. So it is not enough to have desire. It is not enough to have a hunger. It's not enough to have a passion. We must take the step of deciding. And when we say that you are deciding, it means that you actually make up your mind that you want the thing and you begin to take the steps towards it. Now, if I desire for for maybe jollof, uh, maybe I'm getting someone very hungry right now, but I desire for jollof and maybe grilled chicken. As long as I'm in the place where I am and I'm still having a desire, I don't get the jollof and the grilled chicken. But if I take the step and I go out there and I, and I purchase it or I purchase the things that I need and I come and I cook it, I have moved my desire to a place of decision. So God does not just want us to desire his presence. He wants us to decide that we want it. We have to take the necessary steps. We have to take the bold, I mean, steps of making that decision that we want his presence. Then it takes us to our third point, and that is design. We've got to plan our services in, in ways that we, we actually can see God manifest. We don't have to leave things to chance. When we talk about design, it means that you are planning it. It means that your, your desire and your decision is not enough. It means that you are intentional with the structure to develop intimacy with God's presence. And I pray for all pastors, especially for those of us that are watching, that let's plan our services in a way that would allow us to keep our focus on God. Let's structure our services in a way that it eliminates, eliminates a lot of distractions and eliminates a lot of things that, that put our minds from God and sets our minds on other things. Enough of the entertainment in church. God wants to be the center of attraction and we must plan and structure things in that particular way. So all of us must plan it, desire it, First of all, from the pastor, and it comes to all of us as members, that we plan in a way that we can engage with the presence of God. Then it takes us to our fourth important thing that we need to do to keep the focus of God's presence, and that is departure. We've got to depart. We've got to move away. I mean, when we talk about departing, it means that you're moving from one place to the other. Now, if you have a destination that is set in mind, you've got to move from where you are towards that particular place. And when we talk about departing, it means that you cannot dwell in one place and expect to get to the next place. You've got to move. And there are so many things that actually draw our attention away from the presence of God and God wants us to move away from those things. I mean, for some of us, it is the friends that we have. For some of us, the television programs. For some of us, the, the, the addiction to our phones, addiction to social media. Because even sometimes in church services, you see people on their phones and, and they are on Facebook, they are on Twitter, they are on Instagram, they are on WhatsApp. We can't see the presence of God. We can't experience the presence of God when other things are taking our attention. So we've got to depart. We've got to move away from those things and set our gaze on God, and set our minds on God, and set our attention on God. And the final thing that we want to look at when it comes to setting our focus on God's presence is what I call destination. The ultimate goal for which we have come. Now, when I, I decide that I'm moving from Accra to Kumasi, and I get to in Sawong, I don't stop there no matter the things that are happening if there's a fun fair there i don't stop there because that is not my destination my destination is to get to kumasi so until i get to kumasi i don't stop so until we see god manifest his presence in our midst we don't stop the destination must be inside we must not be settled for and we must not settle for just the little things that happen sometimes in church service we see a few things happen and we just get satisfied and we feel we have arrived but 
that God has more for us. There is more of God to see in our midst. There is more of God to encounter when we come together for corporate worship. There's so much more of God that we haven't seen. As I study the scriptures and I look at the encounter that the people had during the dedication of the temple during Solomon's time, as the glory of God filled the place and the priests were not able to do what they intended to do, I said, God, we have a lot to catch up. When I see how God visited the tabernacle during Moses' time and, and the presence of God filled the whole place and the cloud of God saturated the entire atmosphere, I say, Lord, there is more that we need to see in our midst. As I read the passages and I see Jesus Christ during his time moving a service and all the people that were present were healed and there was such a hunger for him. I say, Lord, we need more of you. So, beloved, until we get to that destination, we cannot stop. God's desire is not just to come into our midst because two or three or more have gathered together, but God wants to manifest himself in our midst. Oh, that we will come to that particular place in this generation where we see the manifestation of God in all of our services, not just in one particular local church, but in many churches on a particular Sunday that we can all come out and say that today God invaded our services, today God came into our midst, today God manifested himself in such an awesome way and, and we can't have more of God, we want more of him. Beloved, if you're going to church on Sundays or whichever weekday or for whatever gathering, corporate gathering, musical worship events, whatever gathering it is, I want you to set your mind and your gaze and your focus on only one and that is God. We want to set our gaze on only him. We want to see him alone. Yes, you have friends in church, but that's not a reason why you're coming to church. Yes, you, you have, I mean, other interests in church, but that's not the main reason why you're coming. The main reason is to encounter the presence of God. I pray for all of us from today that we'll set our gaze on God when we come together corporately. And that from today, something will be stirred up in us and in our churches and we'll see God move mightily in our midst. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you. We thank you for what you have revealed to us today, oh God, that will not hide from your presence, that will not keep away from your presence because of the many things of God that draw our attention, but that will set our gaze on you, oh God, whenever we come together. Even in our individual lives, help us to set our gaze on you. And when we come together, oh God, help us not to lose sight of your presence. We thank you, Father. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you so much for joining us. And we have two more parts to this series. God only next week, I'm going to start on musical worship because that is where the, a lot of people have their attention and their minds on. So I'll be speaking on musical worship and its expressions. And, and so we're going to do that for the next two weeks and we bring the curtains to a close on, on, on this whole subject of worship, God's perspective. I trust that this has been a blessing to you. Share this video with other friends and invite others to join us God on the next week the same time at 7:30. We here at GTP Kabod Assembly will love you so much. God bless you and have a wonderful night. See you same time, God willing, next week. Bye-bye.